وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى we're going to finish إن شاء الله this morning التفسير of سورة الفاتحة from the tafsir of Sheikh العلامة عبد الرحمن بن ناصر السعدي رحمه الله تعالى The Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, after he explained what is ibadah, worship, then after that, he's going to speak about al-hidayah, guidance, and it is of two categories. The Shaykh says, afterwards Allah says, guide us to the straight path, ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. So he says that his guide lead and direct us towards the straight path, which is the clear and the correct way that takes us towards him and his paradise. Specifically, it is recognizing the truth and acting according to it. Thus it means guide us towards that right path and continue guiding us while we tread on that path guide us towards the straight path refers to embracing the religion of islam and and denying all other religions while continue guiding us while we tread on that path includes guidance of all of the religious details in terms of knowledge and deeds. Therefore, this is the most perfect and beneficial supplication of the true believer. Due to this, it is mandatory for the people to recite the supplication in every unit. Uh, we know uh, one recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha is, is Rukn in the Salat. Rukn is a pillar in the Salat. If someone did not recite Fatiha, their Salat is invalid. Even if they recite the whole Quran, if they recite Surah Al-Baqarah, but they did not recite Surah Al-Fatiha, their Salat is invalid. So you have to recite it in every Rak'ah. The Shaykh said, so that they can seek Allah's blessings which they are in constant need of. This straight path is the path of those on whom you have bestowed your grace from amongst Allah's prophets, the unwavering affirmers of truth, like Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu and the like, the martyrs, and the righteous, not the path of those who incurred your anger, such as the Jews, who, who despite recognizing the truth, did not accept it, or the way of those who have gone astray, like the Christians and others like them, who after accepting the truth, abandoned it out of ignorance and error. Hence, the surah despite being concise, holds such depths and meaning which no other Quranic surah contains. Surah Al-Fatiha is the depiction of the three kinds of Tawheed. Three kinds of Tawheed, Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, Tawheed al-Luluhiyyah, Tawheed al-Asma'u al-Sifat. The Shaykh said, Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, monotheism of Lordship, this is derived from the word, the Lord of the world, Rabbil Alameen. This is Tawheed al-Rububiyya. Second, Tawheed al or if you wish you can say Tawheed al-Ibadah. Monotheism of worship, believing that only Allah is worthy of worship. This is derived from the word, uh, word Allah, because Allah is the one you worship, Al-Ma'bud. 
And he's saying, you alone we worship and you, and you alone we ask for help. This is ibadah. Three, Tawheed al-Asma' wa sifat monotheism of names and attributes. Accepting and believing without denial. So Al-Sunnah wa Al-Jama'ah wa Alhamdulillah, they affirm to Allah what he affirmed to himself. If Allah said, for example, Ar-Rahman wa Al-Arsh istawa, that the most gracious rose over the throne, we affirm that Allah rose over the throne in a way that befits his majesty. And we don't misinterpret it like the innovators, like for example, the Ashaira. The Ashaira, they, they, they say that he dominated the throne, he conquered the throne. And this is actually tahrif, actually perversion, naam, and distortion of, of, that, of that particular attribute. So now instead of affirming it, you're denying it and you're negating it. Allah did not say he conquered the throne. Plus, when we say that he conquered the throne, he dominated the throne, this would necessitate, well, may Allah save us from that statement, that this would necessitate that he had to make an effort to conquer the throne. And this does not befit his majesty. Okay. It's very serious. Anyway. The Sheikh said, we talk about asma wa sifat. He said, believing in them without, without denial, without tahri, without ta'atil, ta'atil. Metaphor, okay, metaphor is what I explained to you. Metaphor is like when you were, like for example, if someone says, Ra'aytu asadan yakhtub, okay, I have seen a lion delivering a khutbah. Okay, does it mean that he's seen a brave man or did he see a real lion? The first one. He saw a brave lion, a, br a brave man. So you can say that I've seen a lion delivering a khutbah. It doesn't mean that it's, an, it's the animal, it's just a brave man. This is called majaz, metaphor. Okay, another example. In the Quran, in Surah Yusuf, when the brothers of Yusuf went back to their father, Yaqub, so they, they informed him what happened. And they told him, وَاسْأَلِ الْقَرْيَةَ الَّتِي كُنَّا فِيهَا وَاسْأَلِ الْقَرْيَةَ الَّتِي كُنَّا فِيهَا And ask the town where we were. Ask the town. طيب. العلماء they say this is majaz, metaphor by subtraction. Means there's something missing in, the, in that sentence. طيب. المجاز بالحدف. Okay. What is missing there? People. The people. Yes. أهل. So it's like they want to say to him, وَاسْأَلْ أَهْلَ الْقَرْيَةِ And ask the people of the town, because it would be impossible for him to be talking to the walls, the structure. So it has to be the people. نعم. This is called majaz also. Majaz. Because you have الحقيقة and you have majaz. الحقيقة is the reality. And the majaz is metaphor. الحقيقة you cannot deny it. If Allah said he rose over the throne, this is حقيقة. Nobody can come and say, well, it means he dominated the throne. So now you use a metaphor. Okay, you have the, you have a delil, you have a proof. If you don't have a delil, they will reject it. Eh? Eh, no. Tahrif al-Majaz. Tahrif. Tahrif. Tahrif is, is distortion. Tahrif. It's, it's similar to Majaz. Majaz, yes, you could say that. Because Al-Majaz, like for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا And your Lord will come on your Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Okay. أهل السنة, we believe that Allah will come in a way that befits His Majesty. But how? We have no knowledge. طيب. The people of Ahl al-Bida'a, the people of innovation, they say it doesn't mean Allah will come because they want to do what? Negate. Yeah? They want to negate the attributes that he will come. They say his affair will come. Jibreel will come. But Allah said he himself he will come. And how are you going to say? So now you're using al-majaz. You see, using al-majaz. But you don't have dalil, you don't have a proof from the Quran or from the Sunnah. 
that Jibreel will come or the affair of Allah will come. Likewise, Allah said that the hands of Allah are outstretched. And as soon as they say Allah has hand, has hands, that befits his majesty. Now the innovators, they say no, it doesn't mean hands, favors. His favors, his bounties and all this. Because they don't want to affirm that Allah has hand. Why? Because they say, and this is all from uh, Talbis Iblis, deception of Shaitan. Because they say, if we affirm that Allah has hands, or Allah rose over the throne and all this, this would necessitate that we're going to liken him to his creation. We say to them, not necessarily so. Nah, so when it comes to nah. Tawheed as a matter of fact, it's going to always be a uh, haqiqa? Yes. All of those attributes, they are haqiqa. There's no majaz in them. There's no majaz. Now when they say that if we affirm these attributes, this would necessitate that we're going to liken him to his creation. We're going to say to them, not necessarily so. For example, Allah mentioned in the Quran that he is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Wa huwa sami'u al-basir. Okay. Now, does a human being hear or not? Yes, we hear. But our hearing is limited. Our hearing is limited. So we hear and Allah hears. But the hearing of Allah is not like ours. You see? Now, if this is the case, then how are you going to say that you, you how are you going to de de deny and negate this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, without denial, metaphor, or similitude, those attributes of Allah which he has confirmed for himself and which his Prophet وسلم, confirmed for him. The word Alhamd, all praise, is ample proof of this as described in the previous pages. He said, similarly, Allah's word guides us to the straight path, makes mandatory the acceptance of the prophethood because without the guidance of the prophet it would be impossible to tread on the straight path how are you going to tread on the straight path without the guidance of Muhammad can't do it now Allah's decree sovereign of the day of judgment gives evidence for the reckoning of the all deeds this reckoning will be based on justice and fairness. Because the word deen, religion, complete uh, day of life, means reckoning with justice. Surah Al-Fatiha also proves the divine decree and that a person is actually the doer of his own action. Naam, the doer of his own action. Well, uh, refuting who? Al-Jabriya. Yeah, Al-Jabriya, exactly. Because Al-Jabriya, they believe that you have no say-so, you have no will. You are like a feather in the air. And the opposite of that, Al-Qadariya. Because Al-Qadariya, they, 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 they believe that the servant, they create their action, their own action. Yeah, this is also misguidance. Yeah. So now, he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and that a person is actually the doer of his own action. Contrary to the ideologies of Qadariya and Al Jibriya, who believe that a person has no control over his own action, guide us to the straight path negates the viewpoint of the people of innovation because the straight path means knowing and following the way, the way of the truth and the person of innovation will always oppose the truth you alone we worship and you alone we ask for help asserts that religion should be purely for Allah whether it is for the purpose of worship or for seeking help Thus, all praise belong to Allah, the Lord of, of all the world. And I will add the benefit, inshallah, 
about Surah Al-Fatiha, the ulama, they mention that Surah Al-Fatiha has different names. One of them, Fatiha Al-Kitab, the opening chapter of the Quran, and also the mother of the Quran, Umm Al-Kitab, the mother of the Quran, and it is also called the healer. The healer. And it is also called Ruqya, the incantation. Because of that story of the companions of Prophet ﷺ, when they went to that village and the, man, the, the leader, he was stung by a scorpion and they tried to uh, try everything but nothing worked. So they came to the companions of Dhuanullah and Abu Sa'id al Khudri, he recited uh, Al Fatiha on him and he got up as if there was nothing wrong with him. That shows you that the Quran is very powerful. And uh, especially uh, Surah Al-Fatiha, the Ayat Al-Kursi and the like. So uh, one of the names is uh, the incantation. And also it is called Alhamd, the praise. Because it starts out with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And it is also called, uh, Sheikh Al-Uthimini mentioned, that it is called As-Salat, the prayer. And this is taken from Al-Hadith Qudsi. Remember, we studied about Hadith Qudsi. Tayyip. Now, uh, why they would say that it is called a Salat? Because in the Hadith Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that I have divided the Salat between me and my servant in two halves. So when my servant say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah will respond to him and He would say that my servant has praised me. So it is called... Now, and uh, uh, it is called the Salat, and it is also called the pillar. Why? Because it is a pillar of the Salat. For example, if someone was performing the Salat, and he forgot to recite Al-Fatiha, and after he salams out, he, 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 he remembered that he missed one of, uh, he did not recite Al-Fatiha in one of the units, then he has to make up, make up for that unit. He has to make up that unit, okay? And then he has to do two sajda, sahu, the two sajda of forgetfulness before he salams out. But if he realized while he was in that particular rak'ah where he did not recite al-Fatiha, then he has to go back up like if he was in ruku or sujood, he has to go back up, recite al-Fatiha, and continue his salat, and then he should make two sajjat al before he salams out. But if he did not realize until he was in the second rak'ah, for example, then the first rak'ah is gone. You don't count it. So the second rak'ah becomes the first. So at the end of the salat, he's required to make two sajjat al before he salams out. So that's why they call it the pillar. Because it is a pillar of the Salat. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all the ilm al-nafi' wal amal salih. Walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi. Barakallahu. Na'am to Allah. Oh, with regards to, can you go briefly over the uh, ta'tir, the ta'tir, ta'tir, the tarif? Okay. You have, Ahl al-Sunnah, they say that we affirm the attributes the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they were confirmed by Allah himself in the Quran and by his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa in the sunnah min ghayri ta'atil min ghayri ta'atil without denial okay ta'atil that way you can understand what ta'atil is that's why they call them what? mu'attila Mu'attila, the people who practice ta'atil. Like al jahmiya and Al-Ashaira and Al-Mu'tazila and other than them. Even though Al-Jahmiya, they're the worst. No doubt about that. They're worse than, than, than Al-Mu'tazila and other than them. طيب. Now, ta'atil is when you don't affirm the attributes. You negate it. It's called ta'atil. Okay? Tahrif is when you distort the meaning. Okay? You distort the meaning. 
For example, Allah said in the Quran, Rahman on the earth is the most gracious rose over the throne. They said stola. You see, they distort the meaning now. Okay, stola rose over stola. He conquered. So two different meaning. طيب. Now, Imam Al Qayyim. He said, "Noon al Yahudi, wala mujahmiin, huma عند الله سواء." Remember, Qayyim. He said, "The noon of the Jews and the lamb of the Jahmiya, they are the same in the sight of Allah, because both of them are what? Tahrif. Both of them are distortion. How is that? In Surah Al Baqarah." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا دْخُلُوا هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةَ فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا حَيْتُ شِئْتُمْ رَغَدًا وَادْخُلُوا الْبَابَ سُجَّدًا وَقُولُوا حِطَّةٌ وَقُولُوا حِطَّةٌ نَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ خَطَايَاكُمْ وَسَنَزِيدُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah said, in this particular ayah, Allah commanded them to say, to ask for forgiveness. وَقُولُوا حِطَّةٌ Okay, hitpatun means forgiveness. Okay, they said hinpatun. They added the noon. Okay, they said hinpa. The Jews. Now, that's why he said noon ul Yahudi, the noon of the Jews. Now you understand what he's talking about. Tayyib. So they said hinpa, and the hinpa has a different meaning. Wheat. What does wheat have to do with forgiveness? You see, this is called tahrif. Okay? Now, what is the relationship between the Jews and uh, and uh, Jahmiya? Okay, now he's going to tell you. Jahmiya, when Allah says he rose over the throne, Allah said, Stawa. Rahman ul Arashi, Stawa. That the most gracious rose over the throne. That way, that in a way, that befits his majesty. He says, "Stawla." They add the lamb. Stawa, stawla. Okay, stawla dominates, conquer. طيب. So now, when they added the lamb, they resemble the Jews because the Jews they said "hinta," and the Jahmiya they say "stawla." They added the lamb. So this is called tahrif, distortion. So من غير تعطيل ولا تحريف ولا تمثيل ولا تمثيل. تمثيل is when you liken Allah سبحانه وتعالى to His creation. And this is كفر العياذ بالله. One of the salaf he said من شبع الله بخلقه من شبع الله بخلقه فقد كفر. Whoever likens Allah to His creation is committed kufr. والعياذ بالله الله سيرا صلى الله عليه وسلم من غير تحريف من غير تعطيل ولا تحريف ولا تمثيل لا ولا تكييف ولا تكييف means is not is not permissible for us to say that how does Allah come how does Allah rise over the throne this is والعياذ بالله this is this is serious we we have and, and that's why I remember the story of Imam Malik when a man came to him and he asked him, he said, Ya Aba Abdullah, Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa, kayfa istawa? He said, O Abu Abdullah, the most gracious rose over the throne, how did he arise over the throne? Sheikh Uthimin rahimahullah, he said, Imam Malik, he hung his head down. This is heavy, it's very heavy. This is not fiqh, this is aqeedah. It's very serious. You make a mistake, you're done. Yeah, it's serious stuff. طيب. Now he hung his head down until the sweat filled his forehead. This is a heavy matter. And then he raised his head and he told him this beautiful golden rule. The ulama is still used till today. He said, Al istiwa ma'loom. He said, He rose over the throne, is known. We know that Allah rose over the throne. وَالْكَيْفُ مَجْهُولٌ How he rose over the throne is unknown. مَجْهُولٌ I have no knowledge about that. Leave it alone. He said, وَالْإِمَانُ بِهِ وَاجِبٌ 
and to believe that Allah rose over the throne is obligatory upon you. And to ask a question, how? Is an innovation in the religion. And then he, he had that man taken out of the masjid. Subhanallah. Because he may, you know, uh, tarnish the other people. So that's why the innovators, you have to deal with them quickly. Yeah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all safety in our deen. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. The Mawduri. Mawduri. He, he says that, um, you know, as far as uh, in, in his, in his ayatul kursi, um, he, instead of using the, the, the kursi as um, the footstool, he says that he means the throne and he also uses the, um, you know, um, the Allah, is, uh, instead of above his throne, he, he dominated, like he said. This is a, this falls under... Tahrif. No Tahrif. doubt. He, he said dominate. That's, uh, that's the, the, that's the, uh, uh, the misinterpretation of the Ashaya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say dominate the throne. Yeah. The same thing yeah. would, would fall under with, with the use of Ali. Now, translation with same the thing. Kursi. Yeah, that's Tahrif. The, so when they translate the, 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 the meaning of, of Kursi to, to throne, like just they say it means the verse of the throne, not the verse of the footstool. Just it is that is that is that ta tahrif or? Yeah, it would be tahrif. If it's kursi, then it's kursi. You don't you don't change it to the throne. The arsh. La, la. Right. No. It's not ayat al arsh. Ayat al kursi. Right. No. Yeah, that's tahrif too. No doubt about that. Yeah, Allah said the kursi. Why are you saying the arsh? So that's no. Subhanallah. When a person, when a person huh. does that, that. Kind of invalidates the ahsma wa sifat, even if it's one um, uh, aspect of it, as far as the tahrif. Yeah, because if he made tahrif in that, most likely he's going to make tahrif in the other attributes. Because the, like if the, the principle, effect. yes, the, exactly, domino effect. So if, it, if the principle is corrupt, what do you expect? Allah yeah. Musta'a. Fadala. Now, now, seven matani, the seven often repeated ayat. No doubt about that. Now, Jazakallah. That's it, right? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the ilm nafi al amal salih. Walhamdulillah bil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi. Wa iyaq. Wa iyaq. Wa iyaq. Wa iyaq, ya akhi. Thank you.